And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. Folks, over the years, you and I have discussed thousands of automotive repairs and maintenance procedures here on Car Clinic, all designed to help save you money and make your car safer to drive. One of the challenges we've discussed was damage to your vehicles from old, worn-out roads. The fact is, according to the Department of Transportation, that's the DOT, for every dollar spent upgrading America's roads, drivers would save $6 on suspension-related repairs. Damage is caused by potholes, ruts, rough highways, old bridges, dangerous highways in general. Today, I've invited Pete Ron, Secretary, Department of Transportation for the state of Maryland, to join us on Car Clinic to address these issues. Secretary Ron, welcome back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Glad to have you in the house today. Well, thank you, Bobby. I very much appreciate that. And, you know, I just go by Pete. Well, Pete, it sounds great to me. I have questions about the gas tax and road repair, but before we get into those details, give our car clinic listeners and viewers an overview on two public funds. Number one, the general fund, and number two, the gas tax that feeds the highway trust fund. Absolutely. General fund is sort of what it means at the federal level. Every state has one as well, and it's essentially where most money goes into that general fund and is then appropriated by Congresses or, or the Congress or state legislatures. So there's the general fund, and then there are the special funds that are created. And so at the federal level, there is the Highway Trust Fund and the Mass Transit Trust Fund, and those two accounts uh, have specific revenue streams that go into them, and that is the gas tax is the largest, but there's also taxes that come from – there's gas, there's diesel taxes, there's taxes on uh, large semis specific, there's a tax on tires, and all of those taxes go into the, the highway trust fund or the mass transit trust fund. To just take it one step further, uh, you know, we pay an 18.4 cent federal gas tax or uh, gas tax on – every gallon of gas that we pump into our cars. And so 18.4 cents, just under three cents of that gas tax goes into uh, the uh, mass transit account. So fuel usage is uh, helping to pay for mass transit in this country. Just under 15 and a half cents of the 18.4 is going into the highway trust fund. Okay, so Pete, to be clear, as I understand, o- over the years, gas tax revenues were shared with the general fund, so not all gas tax monies collected actually went to repair our roads. Is that correct? There, there was a time uh, when there were large surpluses in the highway trust fund, and that while they sat there, they would be used by the federal government for other things. On paper, those dollars were sitting there. But technically, the gas tax has been distributed historically uh, to those two funds. And it's only that when there were balances that were not being utilized that the actual cash might be used for something else. But the funds were always credited to those two accounts. And let's fast forward to today. Is it true that the general fund now actually supports the Highway Trust Fund? And if so, what might be the first step to reduce the amount of funds now being transferred from the general fund to the Highway Transportation Fund as we need to keep our highways in safe repair? Whenever you start talking about federal appropriations, it's like a three-step process that's Byzantine. It's just it, it doesn't make sense to most people. I'm not even sure it makes sense to Congress. But the first thing that has to happen before money can be spent is a committee has to authorize a program of X dollars. And so for highways and transit, there's an, uh, there's an authorization for this amount of money. Uh, and then the next step is you have to get to an appropriations committee for them to actually appropriate the funds. And so I had it explained to me once that Uh, This process is sort of like your father saying, sure, you can have a $25 a week allowance. Now go to your mother and get it. So (laughs) this is is sort of what goes on in Congress. So you got one committee that says the program is this, and then you have to get the money. (laughs) And what we've been dealing with for quite some time now 
has been that the authorized level, and these bills used to be, uh, you know, six years in, in length, and now they've gotten shorter and shorter. And, and so what most recently, though, there was a five-year bill, which was very successful, but it authorized levels of, you know, X, and it grew over those five years. Revenues into the trust funds has not produced enough to support the authorized levels, and Congress has had to take general fund monies, transferring them into the trust funds to support the amount that had been authorized by the, the other committees. Thank you, Pete. Uh, and thanks for joining us on, on Car Clinic today. I, I believe that you support, and, and I hesitate to use the word gas tax, but considering, for me, it would be a, a safety tax when you consider all the, the potholes and the ruts and the damage d- done to automobiles. Uh, do you believe in and you support the gas tax increase? I, I, is that a, just a yes or no? Well, you know what? I, since now versus the previous time I worked or that we visited, uh, I actually work for a governor, and my position needs to be the same as my governor's. Uh, my governor does not support tax increases uh, or fee increases, but I can tell you that the federal gas tax has not been increased since 1993, and there is a huge gap today of what the purchasing power is of those dollars versus now 25 years later. Well, I can only so imagine. It's significant. But what we are also seeing, and I'm seeing this in Maryland and it's going on all over this country, is that the vehicle miles traveled on our system has, since the recovery of the recession, been growing significantly at 3.5% a year, which is big. For us, what we've been seeing is we've been growing about a billion miles a year in additional traffic on our roads so that we are now over 52 billion miles traveled on Maryland's roads. So normally you would see your gas tax revenues would be growing right along with it. But what we're, what we're facing is that the efficiency of our cars today, and it's not just electric or even hybrids, it's all cars. And I suspect most of your listeners, when you've bought a car recently, in all likelihood, it's getting better mileage than the car you replaced. Oh, no, no so, doubt. Absolutely. So what we're seeing, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm sorry, Bobby, so no. what we're seeing is that this is that our our revenues now are flat, even though we're seeing this pretty sharp curve of more driving going on, and that can't continue forever. We're we're, we're going to have to figure something out as some way to still pay for our roads that people are driving on. To that end, that brings me to just a couple of more questions for you. And number one, how much increase in tax would it take to solve the shortage that exists today, considering that new cars get better gas mileage? And then uh, the second question to how much would it take to solve this shortage is, how do we make up for the loss of gas tax on EVs, on electric vehicles? So the last report I saw was that roughly 15 cents per gallon would need to be raised as a tax to close this gap between what the trust fund has been producing and what is being appropriated. But it's important to keep in mind is that if you raise it 15 cents, all you're doing is replacing the general fund money that has been going into the trust fund. So it would maintain where we are at from an appropriation standpoint, Mm -hmm. but you would raise a tax and then not see a huge amount of new benefit because all you're doing is filling in the gap. But that that number is 15 cents from what I have seen. Georgia has now put in place two indexes to their state gas tax, and one of those is to index their state gas tax to inflation, and the second one is they are indexing it to the the average fleet economy of those cars registered in Georgia. And so that as those cars become more efficient, it will index the gas tax to at least hold it harmless and retain the purchasing power of that tax. So it's an interesting approach, and it's a way that I think that they will be able to basically keep the gas tax on life support for quite some time. Do you see, uh, Pete, that other states will follow Georgia if that model works so well? You know, I I think it will. I think you'll see several states do that. But again, uh, you know, in Maryland, uh, my governor would not support any any change to the, you know, to the type of taxing that, that represents more tax. I need to be extra clear on that. But I think there will be states 
that are going to look at the Georgia model, and I think, as I say, it can keep the gas tax viable uh, for, for, I think, a substantial amount of time. Now, you ask about uh, EVs. What about these electric vehicles? And right now, electric vehicles are, are still a very tiny percentage of the auto fleet. But everything that's going on out there is, is, you know, all the manufacturers are coming out with electric vehicles. And as they come up with extended batteries, it's probably they're going to become more popular. And at that point, I don't know if we just end up having to do a, you know, a, a, a flat fee for a mm-hmm. for a, mm-hmm. an electric vehicle mm-hmm. that that would be the equivalent of what an average car would pay in fuel taxes. So probably something in the range of an annual tax of one hundred and twenty hundred and fifty dollars would would um, result in about the same contribution that most state gas taxes contribute. Uh, I understood, and I I see definitely when you consider that there are so many countries. I mean, in in France, in Germany, in 2030, no longer will you see internal combustion engine automobiles on the new side of the cars, and so they've already shifted. And uh, and China recently implied that they would follow suit. Uh, in the future. So we may be 25 years. Our conversation may be uh, 25 years uh, ahead of its time. But the fact is, as you said, we, we have to stay even here. And to do so, we have to address those issues. And folks, I just want to share with you uh, on Secretary Ryan here, one of the things that, that he actually, his job is a big responsibility for providing a balanced, reliable, safe, uh, efficient, and affordable transportation system that's essential to uh, all of the uh, consumers and the businesses in Maryland. And with 11,000 employees, uh, not to put you on the spot, Pete, but uh, give us an insight on how to manage 11,000-plus employees for the state of Maryland. <laughs> well, I think you use the, the key word there is you lead them, you, you don't manage them, right? I very much enjoy uh, being associated with a Department of, of Transportation. Uh, this is my actual third state that I've been a, a secretary of. And for some darn reason, I keep saying yes to these jobs just because <laughs> I enjoy them so much. Well, Pete Ron, Secretary, Department of Transportation for the state of Maryland, thank you for joining us here on Car Clinic. Pete, much appreciate your time and value your input. Thank you, Bobby. It's been my pleasure.